Solving x prime equals ax is straightforward if a is diagonalizable. However, unfortunately, we see our students still making quite a lot of errors. Maybe they are taking it too easy? So let us see how this is done. And we will also discuss where the errors are coming from and how you can avoid them. So let us take a look at x prime equals ax and here we have our a. So we need our eigenvalues and our eigenvectors first. Let's get started with the eigenvalues. So we compute p lambda equals the determinant of a minus lambda i. Here it is, equals 1 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda. So in this case, 1 minus lambda squared minus 1 times 4 minus 4. So already here, sometimes mistakes are made in the computation of the determinant, and then you get the sign wrong here. Now, we have to set p lambda equal to 0. So 1 minus lambda squared minus 4 equals 0, or 1 minus lambda squared equals 4. So 1 minus lambda equals plus or minus 2. And our eigenvalues lambda 1 equals minus 1, and lambda 2 equals 3. So there we have our eigenvalues. And here we have a fast check. The sum of these eigenvalues, so minus 1 plus 3 equals 2, has to be equal to the trace of the matrix A, so equal to 1 plus 1 equals 2 as well. So this is a check. So sometimes people make mistakes in the eigenvalues. Here you have a check. Um, well, and if your sum of your eigenvalues is not equal to the trace of A, you have made a mistake in the eigenvalues. Correct the mistake then because otherwise you will get a problem in the second step, the eigenvectors. So let us start with lambda 1 equals minus 1. We compute a minus lambda 1 times i, so here it is. You add zeros and you do row reduction. So we do minus 2 here, and we get a free variable. That is what you should get. If you do not have a free variable, you only get the trivial solution and there's something wrong. So here you have an other check. You should have a free variable. And be careful when solving. C2 equals is free. 2 times C1 plus C2 equals 0 from the first row. So we can solve for C1. Put them both in a vector. We get the vector x equals C2 times minus 1 half 1. And we have our first eigenvector. If we take, for example, C2 equals 2, we get our first eigenvector minus 1, 2. So also in this process of solving, we sometimes see minuses uh, are wrong. So just do the, uh, uh, the solving as you learned in linear algebra. Be careful here. Then second eigenvalue, same idea. A minus lambda two times uh, identity matrix. So now you have to subtract three from the diagonal and add zero. So we get over here. Now we do plus 2 over here. And again, we get a zero row, as we should, because now we have a free variable. Again, c2 equals is free. And we have minus 2 times c1 plus c2 equals 0. So we can solve for c1 equals 1 half c2. So here we have our c1, 1 half c2, and here the c2. And we can take a convenient c2 to get our second eigenvector. We take c2 equals 2 to get our second eigenvector, 1, 2. Of course, you can take any C2 you like, not zero, but all those are fine. And then we have our uh, solution. So our x1 of t, our first independent solution, equals v1 equal to the power lambda 1t, and our second independent solution equals v2 times e to the power lambda 2t. There we are. And our x of t is a linear combination of x1 and x2. So that is how you solve x prime equals a times x if a is diagonalizable.